the books commonly termed Apocrypha. First Esdras. The first book of Esdras relates a series of episodes from Old Testament history, beginning with the Passover celebrated in Jerusalem by Josiah around 621 BC and ending with the public reading of the law by Ezra around 444 BC. It reproduces the substance of 2 Chronicles 33 verse 1 through 2 Chronicles 36 verse 23, the whole of Ezra, and Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 73 through chapter 8 verse 12. An addition to the biblical narrative appears in 1 Esdras chapter 3 verse 1, the tale of the three guardsmen. Three young men who were acting as bodyguards to King Darius were keeping themselves awake by debating what was the strongest force in the world. One said wine, because of its peculiar power over men, another suggested the king, with unlimited power over his subjects, and the third, Zerubbabel, affirmed that woman, who gives birth to man, is strongest, but truth is victor over all things. The king, who was asked to decide the winner, favored Zerubbabel's answer and offered him any reward he might choose. Zerubbabel asked permission to return to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. The section ends with a description of the Jews departing from Babylon en route to Jerusalem. Most scholars suggest that 1st Esdras was composed in Egypt sometime after 150 BC. 2nd Esdras The core of 2nd Esdras, chapters 3 through 14, purports to describe seven apocalyptic revelations granted to Ezra in Babylon. They are concerned with the problem of Israel's suffering and attempt to justify the ways of God to man. The author was evidently a Jew who looked forward to the advent of Israel's Messiah and the period of blessedness which he would bring. The introduction, chapters 1 and 2, and the conclusion, chapters 15 and 16, contain additions written from a Christian viewpoint. The core was probably written in Aramaic toward the end of the 1st century AD. About the middle of the 2nd century an introduction was added, in Greek, and a century later the concluding chapters were written. Oriental versions and many of the best Latin manuscripts contain only the core of the book, Tobit. Tobit is a book of religious fiction, probably written in Aramaic during the 2nd century BC. It tells the story of a pious Jew of the tribe of Naphtali in Galilee who, with his wife Anna and their son Tobias, was taken to Nineveh by Shalmaneser around 721 BC. In the land of exile they scrupulously obeyed the Jewish law. When Tobit lost his eyesight he sent his son to rages in Media to obtain payment of a debt. An angel led him on to Ekbatana where he fell in love with a beautiful widow whose seven husbands had successively been killed on their marriage day by an evil spirit. Tobias married the virgin widow and escaped death by burning the inner part of a fish, the smoke of which put the evil spirit to flight. As an added blessing, the gall of the fish was used to cure the blindness of the aged Tobit. Judith The story of Judith was probably written in Hebrew by a Palestinian Jew during the years following the Maccabean revolt. It tells how Judith, a Jewish widow, delivered her people from the Assyrian commander Holofernes who was laying siege to Bethulia. Risking great personal danger, Judith made her way to the tent of Holofernes where she beguiled the Assyrian with her charms. Getting him into a drunken stupor, Judith took the sword of Holofernes, cut off his head and brought it back to Bethulia as evidence that God had given his people victory over the Assyrians. Judith may be compared with Biblical Yael who killed the Canaanite general Sisera. The additions to the book of Esther during the 2nd or the 1st century BC an Egyptian Jew translated the canonical book of Esther into Greek, and at the same time interpolated a total of 107 verses into six places where he felt that a religious note should be added. These pious insertions mention the name of God, and prayer, neither of which appear in the canonical Esther. The apocryphal editions add 10 verses to Esther 10, and 6 additional chapters, numbered 11 to 16. In the Greek Septuagint, However, the supplementary verses are distributed through the text so as to make one continuous narration. The Wisdom of Solomon An Alexandrian Jew, sometime between 150 and 50 BC composed an ethical treatise which he named the Wisdom of Solomon in order to gain for it a wider reading. He sought to protect the Jews in Egypt from falling into skepticism, materialism, and idolatry, and to teach his pagan readers the truth of Judaism and the folly of heathenism. The book begins with an exhortation to the rulers of the earth to seek wisdom and follow righteousness. 
Its theology is based on the Old Testament with modifications derived from Greek philosophical ideas current in Alexandria. Unlike the Old and the New Testaments which honor the body, the wisdom of Solomon regards it as something that weighs down the soul, a mere earthly tent which burdens the thoughtful mind. The pre-existence and immortality of the soul are maintained, although the Hebrew Christian doctrine of bodily resurrection is absent. Ecclesiasticus, or the wisdom of Jesus the son of Sirach. Ecclesiasticus, an ethical treatise extolling the virtue of wisdom, was written in Hebrew between 200 and 175 BC by a pious scholar from Jerusalem, Jesus the son of Sirach. The author's grandson, an Alexandrian Jew, translated the work into Greek and added a prologue. It is the longest of the apocryphal books, and the only one with a known author. Like the canonical Proverbs, Ecclesiasticus deals with a wide variety of practical subjects. It's everything from diet to domestic relatants. The longest continuous section of the book, chapters 44 to 50, is the praise of famous men which briefly characterizes a long series of Hebrew worthies from Enoch, Noah, and Abraham, down to Zerubbabel and Nehemiah, and finally the high priest Simon, a contemporary and friend of the author. Baruch The Book of Baruch, ostensibly written by Jeremiah's friend and secretary, is a composite work which was not completed until the 1st century BC or later. Although the final recension was written in Greek, some sections may be traced to Hebrew originals. The book begins with a prayer of penitence, recognizing that the tragedies which befell Jerusalem are the just recompense for her sins. A second poetical section explains that Israel's misfortunes are due to her neglect of wisdom. This wisdom, whose praises are sung by a philosophically minded writer, is equated with God's law. The third section of the book, also poetic, is a message of comfort and hope for distressed Israel. The enemy will be destroyed and the children of Jerusalem will return in triumph. Baruch is the one book of the Apocrypha which breathes something of the fire of the Old Testament prophets, although it is lacking in originality. The Letter of Jeremiah Sometime about 300 BC or thereafter an unknown author wrote an impassioned sermon based on Jeremiah 11.10, in which he showed the utter impotence of gods of wood, silver, and gold. This sermon, known as the Letter of Jeremiah, was originally written in Hebrew, although it is extant only in Greek and translations derived from the Greek. Since many Greek and Syriac manuscripts, as well as the Latin version, attach the letter of Jeremiah to the book of Baruch, it appears as the sixth chapter of Baruch in most English translations of the Apocrypha. The letter has no relation to Baruch, however, and some ancient codices place it after the biblical book of Lamentations. The Prayer of Azariah and the Song of the Three Young Men these are additions to Daniel, inserted between 323 and 324. Sometime during the 2nd or 1st centuries BC the three additions to canonical Daniel which exist as separate books of the Apocrypha were written by unknown authors. The first of these, the prayer of Azariah and the song of the three young men, was probably written in Hebrew by a pious Jew during the period when his people were suffering at the hand of Antiochus Epiphanes or in the period of the Maccabean revolt which followed. During the ordeal of the fiery furnace, Azariah is represented as praising God, confessing his people's sins, and praying for national deliverance. The angel of the Lord then came into the furnace and drove out the fiery flame so that the youths were unharmed. Then from the furnace they sang their praises to God in the song which is reminiscent of Psalm 148 as to content, and Psalm 136 as to antiphonal form. Susanna it is uncertain whether the original of Susanna was written in Hebrew or Greek. Its unknown author lived sometime during the 2nd or the 1st century BC, but we are ignorant of other details concerning his life. Yet the book itself is recognized as one of the great short stories of world literature. It tells how two immoral elders threatened to testify that they had found Susanna, the beautiful wife of an influential Babylonian Jew, in the arms of a lover if she would not submit to them. When she repulsed them, they charged her with adultery and at the mouth of two witnesses she was convicted and sentenced to death. A young man named Daniel, however, interrupted the proceedings and questioned the two witnesses separately. He asked each to identify the tree under which he had seen Susanna and her supposed lover. Betrayed by their own inconsistent answers, the guilty elders were put to death and Susanna was saved. In the Septuagint, the story of Susanna precedes the canonical book of Daniel, 
in the Vulgate it follows it. Bell and the Dragon The stories of Bell and the Dragon were probably written in Hebrew toward the middle of the 1st century B. C, and added to the book of Daniel by its Greek translator. In the Septuagint it directly follows Daniel, while in the Vulgate it comes after Susanna. The story of Bell is one of the world's oldest detective stories. It tells how Cyrus, the Persian king, asked Daniel why he did not worship Bell, the god of Babylon. Cyrus told Daniel how much flour and oil and how many sheep the god Bell consumed each day. Thereupon Daniel persuaded Cyrus to deposit the usual provisions in the temple, and then to close and seal the temple doors. In the meantime Daniel scattered ashes over the temple floor. When morning came the food was gone, and the floor was covered with footprints of the priests, their wives and children who had used a secret entrance under the table to come by night into the temple and consume the provisions. The king, convinced of the perfidy of Bel's priests, ordered them I slain and their temple destroyed. The dragon is really a serpent which the king worshipped until Daniel killed it by feeding it lumps of pitch, fat, and ham. The Babylonians, furious at the destruction of their god, demanded that Daniel be put to death. Reluctantly the king consented and Daniel was placed in a den of lions. The lions did not molest Daniel, who was miraculously fed by the prophet Habakkuk who was caught up by an angel in Judea and taken to the lion's den in Babylon. On the seventh day the king took Daniel from the lion's den and cast his enemies into it, whereupon they were immediately devoured. The stories of Bel and the dragon were intended to ridicule idolatry and discredit heathen priestcraft. The Prayer of Manasseh the Apocrypha, Prayer of Manasseh was probably written during the last two centuries BC by a Palestinian Jew. Scholars are uncertain whether it was composed in Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek. The prayer is ascribed to Manasseh, the king of Judah who, according to 2 Chronicles 33 was taken to Babylon where he repented of the idolatry that had characterized the years of his reign. Mention is made of a prayer offered by Manasseh, and a pious Jew appears to have attempted to write such a prayer as Manasseh would have uttered. The prayer is typical of ancient Jewish liturgical forms. It opens with the ascription of praise to the Lord whose majesty is seen in creation and in his mercy toward sinners. This is followed by personal confession and supplication for pardon. The prayer concludes with a petition for grace and a doxology. 1 Maccabees 1st Maccabees is a valuable historical record of the 40 years beginning with the accession of Antiochus Epiphanes to the Syrian throne and ending with the death of Simon the Maccabee. It was probably written by a Palestinian Jew, in Hebrew, about 100 BC. The book gives us our best account of the Jewish resistance to Antiochus, and the Maccabean wars which ultimately brought independence to the Jewish state. It relates the exploits of three of the sons of Mattathias, the priest who defied Antiochus and sparked the revolt, Judas, Jonathan and Simon. The annual Jewish festival of Hanukkah, celebrated at the same season as Christmas, commemorates the rededication of the temple as a result of the bravery of the Maccabees. The festival is mentioned in the New Testament as the Feast of Dedication. 2nd Maccabees 2nd Maccabees is in the main parallel to the first seven chapters of 1st Maccabees, covering the period from 175 to 160. It professes to be an abridgment of a five-volume history written by Jason of Cyrene whose identity is a matter of conjecture. The author of 2 Maccabees was evidently an Alexandrian Jew who wrote in Greek. He may have written as early as 120 BC or as late as the early 1st century AD. 2 Maccabees is less historical and more rhetorical than 1 Maccabees. It is written from the Pharisaic viewpoint and stresses the miraculous and the marvelous in contrast to the more prosaic and objective 1st Maccabees.